Welcome back to ESSA TV. Joining us today is Ms. Kay Carnell, AO, the Australian Small Business and Family Enterprise Ombudsman. Ms. Carnell brings extensive experience and knowledge to her current role, having run her own small business for 15 years before becoming the Chief Minister of the Australian Capital Territory in 1995 for a five-year period. She was appointed an Officer of the Order of Australia in 2006 for her services to the community through contributions to economic development and the support of the business sector, knowledge industries, the medical sector and medical technology advances. It seems that small businesses could be set for a bleak future. The rise of internet shopping and, a sm uh, and uh, the, just seems like the survival of small brick and mortar uh, stores is, is just much harder because the power dynamics seem to be shifting towards um, big giants. So the encroachment of multinational giants like Alibaba, Amazon and even Uber Eats can, just seems like small brick and mortar stores are, are just in for a hard run. Um, to what extent do you agree with this sentiment and how can small businesses uh, survive or even thrive in this era? I think that for small businesses who don't change, you're absolutely right. So if small businesses continue to operate their businesses the way they always have, they're in for a really tough time. But I think the advent of technology actually um, improves the future of many small businesses. Remember, the, Ali, um, it, the Amazon platform encourages small businesses to come in and to utilise their platform and to um, and, and to, in, to enlarge their uh, their market. So does Alibaba, so does eBay, and others. So if you're selling product. Your capacity to utilise these platforms, you could look at it, look at rather than comp competitors. Um, you've got a chance of really hitting a much, much broader market. And even if we think about service delivery, um, we've got any amount of cases of people who um, were struggling. I'll give you an example: um, a couple of um, mining engineers out of Kalgoorlie who um, were suffering as a result of the mining downturn, um, formed a business, went online with the uh, support of their teenage, one of their teenage children, um, and now are providing um, consultancy services into China and other parts of the world. So if you use technology well, you can grow your business and not see some of these big uh, bear moths, you know, um, as, a, as a threat. Look at them as an opportunity. Uh, and um, and make it work for you. I think this is pretty is, is is a smart way to go, and it does give small businesses an opportunity to grow their markets. I'll give you one other example that's a beauty. Um, a um, we call it a frock shop, but a dress shop out of Cooma called Bird's Nest. Um, that was a little frock shop in the main street going broke. One of the um, family business. One of the uh, the children of the owners was doing um, an entrepreneurship um, an economics course at Sydney Uni, decided that you could take a frock shop and take it global. Bird's Nest now um, employs over 100 people in Cooma, um, uh, sending product um, and service, by the way, to the world. So there you go. It doesn't have to be a disaster. It can be an opportunity. From your personal experience, uh, what are some of the most pressing challenges uh, you have overcome in your time as a small business owner? Uh, was the overall experience rewarding? Oh, I loved it. Um, I'm a pharmacist. I bought my first pharmacy when I was 25 um, and my second one when I was 26. And I think my third business um, was actually my first child. So, um, so you know, um, they fitted into this into my into my business uh, my business growth so I owned a number of pharmacies over uh, 15 20 years um, the biggest challenge uh, in in small business generally is proper planning to start with so just any old business is no good fairly obviously you have to plan the sort of business you want to be in the old adage at location 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 is really true. So you've got to make sure the business is in the right place. So it's got to be the right sort of business in the right place with the right growth opportunities. And there's all sorts of uh, great sources of data to achieve that. You know, the ABS has got all sorts of 
good information about growth areas, demographics, all the sorts of things you might look at. So first thing is making sure that you're in the right business and in the in the right place. For me as a pharmacist, it was I knew what business I was going to be in, but you know, getting the locations right sometimes was successful and sometimes weren't. Um, I'll tell you the, my probably worst business decision. Um, a, another pharmacist and I opened a pharmacy in 1989 in Cairns. Now, for young ones like you, you won't remember this, but in 1989, there was a major pilots dispute. Bob Hawke was the, um, the prime minister and there was a serious standoff between the pilots and the government. So airline um, traffic in Australia stopped. Now for Cairns, if no one can get to Cairns, um, then there is no tourism, fairly obviously, and tourism is pretty important. The international airport in Cairns has a quite a, you know, has, is a not insignificant international airport flying in from places like Japan and other areas. But if you can't get anywhere once you get to, to Cairns, people don't fly in. So, for um, for Cairns, the economy absolutely died, and um, our pharmacy was in the tourist end of of the uh, of the um, of the city, and uh, and it absolutely died, and it went on for a number of months. So that was um, that just shows you that uh, rotten things can happen, which brings me to my next biggest challenge, and that's cash flow. You know, rotten things like pilots disputes can happen, but other things can happen too. You, know, you might be in the um, in the coffee shop or the restaurant in game and all of a sudden you have, you know, a month of really rotten weather and nobody wants to go and sit on the pavement and having a, having a cup of coffee, um, understandably, <laughs> if the weather's horrible. So cash flow is a really big issue in, um, in, growing, in growing businesses because you can have downturns and if you don't have a capacity to manage those in business, you can get into quite significant problems. Um, and it's not just downturns, it's actually growth as well. So with um, my first pharmacy, uh, it was a pretty rundown pharmacy. We did it up, you know, with the, the paintbrush and the, and the, and the, the, the nails and so on ourselves because we didn't have any money. Um, and we grew the pharmacy quite quickly. But with growth um, comes investment, stock, you know, a whole range of issues that means you've, it's still a cash flow problem because – you know, you're, you're growing your business, you're investing in your business, and you've got to have access to capital. So access to the capital you need to grow your business, access to capital to, to manage, you know, unforeseen downturns are, are all very real problems. But I tell you what, there is nothing better than running your own business, having control, being able to be the best um, you want to be, you know, and do things the way you want to do them. Um, uh, is you know is is pretty important, and I have to say employing people is both a great um, challenge, sometimes a downside, but it's wonderful to be able to provide jobs for um, for other people. So there you are. That's so I loved it. I would encourage everyone to do it, but make sure you plan properly and you have access to enough capital to get past the bad bits. That sort of fits, uh, uh, flows on to my next question, which is a, a lot of young people um, have ideas for businesses, but uh, they're often too afraid to pursue it because of time and capital constraints, like you said before, or just the fear of failure in general. So where do we begin if we're looking to run our own business? Well, first of all, um, it's, it, you know, it's, about an, it's about an idea and working up your idea, talking, you know, talking to people, researching, obviously, you know, all the things that... I'm acutely aware that young people are capable of doing um, and probably do that really well. What I'd suggest after that is going to a site called business.gov.au. Now, normally I would say, you know, um, government business sites are going to be a huge disappointment because they're going to be government and they're not going to handle things quite. But there are two sites. Um, one's an app um, and one's a site that I would really suggest. Now, business.gov.au is put together in a way that is helps you um, work through starting up a business. So it's you know, the questions you have to ask, you know, what's your structure of your business going to be? Is it going to be a company? Is it going to be a sole trader? Is it going to be a partnership? What does that mean? What is 
you know, what does your business case look like? Here's some examples to what a business case might look like. Why do you need a business case? Well, your business case is fund- fundamentally becomes your business plan. And like anything, not a good idea to start anything without, uh, without a plan. And that will also give you some info, some info on where you might, how much capital you might need to get up and running. You know, in some businesses, it's very little because it's something you can start individually. Might be a service, might be, might be an app, might be an IT product. Um, but if you're looking at something, say, in the restaurant space or coffee shops or whatever, there's going to be capital investment that will be required. So you need to work that into the, into the space. But this site, runs through all of those things and gives you information on what a business case and a business plan might look like, you know, what business structures look like, the pros and cons um, of um, of all of them. Um, it then will tell you if there's any business licences um, you might need, then tells you about, you know, what you need to know about employing people if you want to employ people uh, and so on. So it runs, you know, sequential, sequentially through a range of the things that, you um you might need or you do need to know if you're starting a business in a pretty simple sort of way. The other one is um again something I wouldn't have ever believed I would have recommended, but I am, and that's the ATO app. So you know in the app store, go to the Australian Taxation Office, the ATO app. Now in the ATO app, it's really structured for small businesses. You know, that could be anything from, you know, a, a subcontractor, a carpenter, a plumber, or an IT person, or whatever, who's just running an individual business through to, you know, smaller businesses that are actually employ. It's got some great tools, even things like, which I really love, is a capacity to take a photo of a um, of an invoice or a receipt, which goes straight into your um, into your tax records. So some of the great dilemmas of starting a business, things like, you know, keeping all those receipts because they're all tax deductible, where you put them, what does a BAS statement look like, all of those sort of things. Or is It's all there and it's all pretty simple. So starting up a, a business, I'd suggest business.gov.au and the ATO um, app as a, as a good starting point. And, of course, it's all free. Now, can I go on to one other thing, and that's access to capital. Now, for lots of small business startups, they don't need a lot. You know, if you don't need, as I was talking about before, you know, the coffee machine or whatever, you know, you can you could start off quite quite inexpensively. Now, a number of some of the banks are now providing small loans to you know under fifty thousand to small business uh, startups uh, without bricks and mortar. The great dilemma in small business is banks um, really require you to have, you know, a house or bricks and mortar, something they can secure the loan against, which makes it really difficult for lots of small business startups. But if you only need under, say, under 50,000, the banks are, are there, as are the new fintechs. The online lenders will, will lend without bricks and mortar. If you need more than a couple of hundred thousand, say you're buying a coffee shop or whatever, the challenges become quite significantly higher. And I won't suggest for a moment if you don't have a house or access to uh, the bank of mum and dad or something to underwrite your loan, you'll um, it's a, it's it's actually um, quite a struggle. So, um, but there's a range of things you can do in terms of you know leasing equipment. Um, you know, the, um, in terms of you know rent and and so on, there's there's ways you can minimise the um, upfront costs. But I tell you what, it means you're going to have to be very careful with your cash flow because it really will mean you'll be cash strapped right from the beginning, and that's a bad way to go. But look, um, my experience is running your own business is fantastic. Um, it's very fulfilling. Um, whether you decide to stay smallish or you you grow and you know, um, you become the next Alessian or whatever. Um, you know, it's, um, it's, it's, it's really, you know, a great way to operate, but don't do it if you're thinking working for yourself is a way to have a, a calmer lifestyle or work less hours. Not true. You'll work more hours and it'll be less calm, but it'll also be very fulfilling. There has been a new industry, 
Uh, as mentioned before, online marketplace lending to small business owners, fintech startups. I understand your uh, uh, your office is researching into this. Um, I have invested in it myself. Um, it could be seen as a win for small business uh, in terms of lower interest rates um, and more accessible capital, and a win for mum and dad investors and small scale investors uh, who have, who now have um, access to a industry that only traditionally only banks did have. Um, so, what are your thoughts on this uh, industry? I think it's fantastic. Um, it's much more flexible um, than the traditional banking space. You know, the the banks are so you know, risk averse, so so bureaucratic and so on. They really are very difficult for for lots of small businesses to 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 deal with. Whereas the fintech space, by the nature of it, it's a flexible model. Um, there's a range of different players uh, in the space. What we're doing at the moment is working with the, the association that looks after fintechs and fintechs generally to um, to look at a method um, or website really of helping small business compare different products in the fintech space because there is some really really good companies in this space that are doing you know good stuff but you know like any growing industry there are the white shoe brigade people as well the ones that um, are probably selling products that aren't quite what they appear uh, that could end up being incredibly expensive so we think that there needs to be better transparency in terms of what products really look like, what the actual cost will be, um, and what suits you best. You know, for some people, they might just need a loan to be able to, you know, if I think back to pharmacy, be able to buy um, the winter stock for the pharmacy. Pharmacy, winter stock, cough mixtures, all that stuff can be quite a large amount of money. Buying it early means you can get better deals, all sorts of things. So there will be a chunk of money I might need to borrow, um, but the but I'll be able to pay it back in say you know six months. So a sort of loan that might be right for me um, because my my payment time you know I'm going to pay this back probably quite quickly and because as I start selling the product if you know what I mean, but is not quite the same as somebody who is borrowing for a longer term investment, something that they won't see. Um, adequate cash flow to pay it back, say, for one or two years. And interest rates will vary depending on the sort of product that you buy. Um, I saw, you know, in the White Shoe Brigade or the ones, the, the companies that, you know, be careful of, an example recently of a contract which required the small business person to pay back an amount of money every day on this loan. So, you know, it was, an, it was a short-term loan with a daily repayment. Now, the problem was that in itself wouldn't be a problem, except the moment you missed a day, the loan went into default, and the moment the loan went into default, the interest rate doubled. So even if you paid two days, the follow, you know, after the day you missed, you still ended up with default interest. So some things can be, a, you know, can be a trap for the unwary. That loan might be a good loan for somebody who's absolutely confident that they'll never miss a day. But if you, you know, you just got to be careful and understand the space. So I love it. It's flexible. It gives small businesses an opportunity to grow. You can get loans up to $250,000 now from some of the, the fintech um, operators. They'll see need a little bit more security in that space, but they don't require bricks and mortar. They might require you. That business plan I spoke about earlier and maybe some cash some cash, cash flow information but uh, this is an exciting area and it, you know the flexibility is the bit that I love. Thank you so much for your Thank time you. and uh, it was an honor speaking to you. I'm sure people watching this will find this very helpful. Thank you so much for your time.